I promise to blow your mind with information on where you and all life originated from, the differences between your spirit, oversoul, and higher self, soul family, soulmates, twin flames, and soul contracts, and how your soul's journey through the universe and all of its incarnations impact your spiritual evolution. Welcome to Abundant Universe, the podcast that's all about you. Here we talk about your spiritual activation, awakening, and ascension, as well as your personal path to mindfully manifesting your most magical, fulfilling, abundant, and prosperous reality through quantum physics, ancient spiritual teachings, mysticism, and all things esoteric. I'm your personal energy alchemist, spiritual activator, quantum healer, mindful manifestation mentor, and host, Elle Brandlin. And today's episode is one of my favorite kinds of episodes because we're diving into the deep end of the esoteric waters to gain a better understanding of your multidimensional self. But that's not all, so stick around until the very end, and I promise to blow your mind with information on where you and all life originated from, because it'll give you a whole new understanding of pretty much everything, including star seeds, for lack of a better term, the differences between your spirit, oversoul, and higher self. We're going to touch on soul family, soulmates, twin flames, and soul contracts, and I also have some channeled wisdom about how your soul's journey through the universe and all of its incarnations impact your spiritual evolution. Be sure to subscribe wherever you're listening so you never miss a deep diving, mind-blowing episode, and if you're on YouTube, please leave a comment telling me your biggest takeaway because I'm always curious about that, but I really can't wait to hear it this time. Also, don't forget to sign up as a free student of Abundant University at the link in the show notes or description box below to gain instant access to downloads of guided meditations and activations I share on YouTube, plus exclusive content that I don't share anywhere else in our expanding library of masterclasses, meditations, activations, and quantum healing sessions, as well as a special discount on all kinds of things in my shop that's only available to free students. And before we get started today, I have a couple of important things to tell you. First, believe it or not, this is the finale of season three already. So we're going on a short hiatus until October 24th, which is exactly one year since the very first episode aired, because I've been guided to take a little vibration vacation, especially next week for my 46th birthday on Wednesday, and I might put on a little solar return sale for that, so keep an eye out if you want to save on digital products in my shop, including your first month inside Sovereign Soul Society. But I'm just going to be relaxing, resetting, and reassessing to see where Season 4 wants to take us when it starts in a few weeks. I know it's going to get deep though because I'm being called to get really serious about studying the ancient spiritual teachings again since my purpose has evolved into serving those of you who are on a spiritual mastery journey. And now for a quick little disclaimer before we dive in, I'm always teaching from my current level of understanding, which is ever evolving. You may have a different understanding based on your own beliefs, and that's totally okay. Just take what resonates and leave the rest. But without further ado, on with the show. First, I want to explain a little bit about creation itself, so we'll start with where everything emanates from, which you can call the One, the Monad, Unity, Existence Itself, and this is pure, unmanifested, undifferentiated potential that has absolutely no self-awareness. Here there is no duality, no differentiation between light and dark, and no differentiation between conscious and unconscious, so there's no reflection. This is pure spirit, ultimate unity, the state of creation before anything has even been created because it does not know itself. 
It's the absolute in the state of singularity. So it has nothing to even become aware of because there's no reflection yet. It is simply the one or the monad, and you could think of it as the primary oversoul that is undifferentiated, unmanifested, and unaware of itself. But because by definition, it has to contain every possibility within the one or the monad, there is one aspect that is the moment of self-awareness. And in that reflection, it knows itself as the all or all that is. You could think of this as the dyad or the first logos which is where creation stems from, because once creation becomes aware of itself, that creates every other emanation within creation. And you can also call it source, spirit, the divine, the infinite, god, goddess, creator, Ra, Bob, Cindy, the big cheese, the whole enchilada. Honestly, you can call it whatever you like because all names are created within it and it really doesn't care. So pick one that resonates with you. I'll be using spirit, source, and the all interchangeably just so you know what I'm talking about, but don't get the all and the one confused because the one does not know itself and the all does. So to put it another way, from the one or the monad comes the all or the dyad, which is the relationship between the unmanifested state and the first logos or reflection. And when the first logos reflects upon itself, that creates the triad, which is where everything else in creation gets created from. I hope you're following me so far. You may want to listen to this episode a few times and maybe even take some notes if you're a nerd like me. Anyway, you can think of the all or spirit as the oversoul of all oversouls because the act of witnessing itself creates a third awareness or the triad, like I said, which is what births all of life. And from there, each reflection splits off into more and more self-aware reflections. So each oversoul divides itself into further differentiations And the farther away from the monad or the one they are, the more differentiated and individuated the creations become. And in the context of what we're talking about today, your spirit is you as source consciousness or the all in the eternal now. And believe it or not, it has a personality, for lack of a better word, or a unique individuation, if you prefer, because that's necessary in order to create different things and experience things from a different perspective, which is the purpose of all life, to give source or spirit unique vehicles through which to experience and know itself infinitely. And oversouls are even more individuated than spirit, and as their own unique fractals of source consciousness, all oversouls have their own unique characteristics, properties, expressions, themes, purposes, and perceptions as they take on certain aspects of spirit's essence to explore further. Each fractal still includes all the information of spirit, but it highlights a specific attribute that makes it a unique creative essence which individuates that oversoul from other oversouls. Then they divide themselves further into even more individuated fractals, which we call souls. So you can look at an oversoul as a collective of individual souls, and they get their themes, purposes, and missions from their oversoul. And the collection of souls that belong to your oversoul could be considered your soul family. They are your soulmates, which don't necessarily have to be romantic. For example, I know my daughter and I are not only soulmates who incarnate together a lot, but when we're not incarnated together, we act as each other's guides. They can also be karmic partners and other people we have soul contracts or agreements with in this life 
which I'm thinking I'll do a whole episode on next season. So please let me know if you're into that in the comments on YouTube, if that's where you're catching this. And you can always DM me or email me anytime to let me know if you're interested in a specific topic or if you have show ideas for me. So check the show notes or description box for my contact info. And I know this is a somewhat controversial topic, but then there are twin flames who are not part of your soul family in the same way as other souls are because they are actually different expressions of your soul that incarnate at the same time in the same place. They're just a different fractal of its consciousness. So that means the splitting doesn't end with oversouls dividing themselves into individual souls, because each soul then fractalizes itself and crystallizes its consciousness into different incarnations that are all occurring concurrently, because time as we experience it in this realm is an illusion and doesn't actually exist in the higher realms. And some of your soul's incarnations are actually on different planets planets, in other star systems and galaxies, and in different dimensions, or they can be happening in different time periods on this planet, or they can occur in the same time period as I just mentioned with Twin Flames. And this is why you'll never hear me use the term past lives unless I'm trying to communicate what I'm talking about in a way that most people understand it. But even then, I'll be sure to also use the term parallel lives because it's way more accurate. And it explains why it's possible to actually have memories of other lifetimes and even future memories, as well as channel other incarnations and versions of yourself, because all of your soul's incarnations and all the versions of this incarnation of you exist all at once in the quantum field. So these are versions of yourself that you might consider past or future versions, as well as versions that are so different you'd have trouble imagining them. But I'll talk a little bit more about the infinite versions of you in a minute, and I'm sure we'll do an episode that's all about that next season too. Now let's dive a little deeper into your soul's expressions in other dimensions. If you're listening to this, presumably you are a human in the third dimension, but your expression in the higher dimensions could be a being that we might call an angel, for instance. Your physical 3D self is a reflection of your 9D self, and you have a different reflection in every dimension that actually looks like different beings, but they are you. For example, there is nothing in the fifth dimension that is not also projected and anchored in the third dimension, and everything in the third dimension has an aspect in all the other dimensions because, like I said, it's an anchor for something that exists in another dimension. But this is kind of another topic I'm only briefly touching on today because there's a lot to it, so let me know if you want an episode that's entirely about the dimensional structure of reality in Season 4, and I'll start a show list of ideas. And like I said, there are also other expressions or incarnations of your soul experiencing itself infinitely all over the universe. So this is a good time for me to tell you about the incredibly mind-blowing channeled revelation I received regarding how souls evolve through their journeys throughout the cosmos. It's not just spirit, oversouls, higher selves, and souls that are individuated and have their own consciousness, experiences, frequencies, etc. Literally everything has its own unique frequency, energetic signature, and consciousness, including planets, stars, star systems, constellations, galaxies, universes, and so on and your soul incorporates the frequencies, energetic signatures, and consciousnesses of every place, so planet, star, star system, and so on, where it's experiencing incarnations into its own frequency, energetic signature, consciousness, and total multidimensional quantum being or higher self. 
This is why no two souls have exactly the same energetic signature, and your energy is also imprinted everywhere your soul is incarnated because as above, so below, as within, so without, which is the second hermetic principle of correspondence. And just like you're no longer a child, but your inner child is a part of who you are as an adult, and every experience you have in this life shapes who you are as a human being, every incarnation your soul has becomes an integral part of your higher self, empowering it to become more than it's ever been before, which empowers your oversoul and spirit itself to become more than they've ever been before as well. And just like you are billions of, if not trillions or more, new versions of yourself throughout the course of every day as your consciousness shifts through frames of reality or timelines to create the illusion of time and movement, which means that you are never the same version of yourself who had specific past experiences, but your consciousness carries those memories forward with it into each new version it inhabits, Your soul is never the same version of itself either, but it carries the memories of all of its consciousnesses that are concentrated and crystallized into each of its incarnations forward with it. And if you want more information on how your consciousness is constantly shifting in and out of different versions of you in different timelines or frames of reality, I'll leave the YouTube link to the episode I did on that for you below because it has visual aids. But different expressions or incarnations of your soul have experiences that it gets to benefit from for the rest of its eternal life, and that's why it chooses its incarnations, soul blueprints, soul contracts, and all that jazz very carefully. And in turn, your oversoul benefits from every single experience all of the souls contained within it are having, and that benefits the all. So if you're interested in learning more about at least some of your soul's other incarnations in our known universe, because it'll give you access to the full extent of your soul's gifts and abilities, plus a much deeper understanding of your purposes, missions, the themes you came here to explore, the experiences your other expressions are having, and how they may be impacting you in this incarnation, how to clear karma from the quantum realm, and more, please check the show notes or description box below for the link to learn more about working with me, because I gift all of my one-to-one students and mentees with insanely comprehensive parallel lives and star family reports unlike anything you can get anywhere else. And after creating these and channeling information about our origins, I no longer resonate with the term starseed origins because it's clear to me that we don't come from one specific star system and we're all having incarnations all over the universe. But we may have stronger ties with certain places based on how many incarnations we're having there and that information has been incredibly empowering for me personally. And that brings us to your higher self, which can be looked at as a collection of all of your soul's various incarnations. So that's what distinguishes a higher self from an oversoul, even though the terms are actually used interchangeably in some spiritual traditions. But your higher self is a collection of your soul's concurrent incarnations, and an oversoul is a collective of higher selves. And your higher self can also be viewed as the first manifestation of your spirit or your spirit's first personality, vehicle, or vessel in the higher dimensions, whereas your physical human self is your soul's vehicle in 3D. And from the higher self, we can incarnate into lower realms and dimensions. So the higher self directs its incarnations to have experiences that allow it to know itself from new perspectives through the themes it wishes to explore via its unique personalities, vehicles, or vessels in any given lifetime. And in this instance, just so that you know, I'm using the words personalities, vehicles, and vessels interchangeably. It's just whatever you prefer to conceptualize it as. 
And all of our soul's experiences are like data that gets received by the higher self for its own development, which also gets transmitted to the oversoul and all the way back to source, which is how it expands and evolves eternally. So the higher self is the accumulation of all of the experiences, wisdom, and knowledge that each incarnation of a soul is acquiring through its evolutionary journey throughout the cosmos, on this planet, other planets and galaxies, as well as higher and lower dimensions. So to wrap this all up as simply as possible, the moment that the monad or the one witnesses itself or reflects upon itself, creates the dyad, the first logos, or the all, which divides itself into the first ray of oversouls within the dyad, and that creates the triad, which divides itself into even more individuated oversouls, which divide themselves into souls, which divide themselves into unique fractals of consciousness in different incarnations that are all contained within a higher self. So your higher self is a collection of all of your soul's fractals of consciousness that are having different incarnations, and your oversoul is a collective of different higher selves that are all exploring the themes of your oversoul through their own unique personality, and the higher selves within your oversoul contain your soul family. And you can think of your consciousness as a trinity. First, you have your soul, or more specifically, this fractal of your soul's consciousness that's experiencing your current incarnation and listening to me talk right now. So that's you experiencing this present moment, which you can think of as the witness. And your goal as the witness is to expand your consciousness so you can embody as much of your soul light or essence as possible, which I have an activation for inside SSS or in my shop. And the evolutionary purpose of a soul is to embody as much of its higher self's personality or essence as possible while it's experiencing itself in multiple incarnations. And this is how you as one fractal of its consciousness can access more of your soul's overall gifts, memories of your parallel lives, etc. And I also have activations for this in my shop and Sovereign Soul Society. So check the links below if you're interested in that. Then you have your higher self, which is experiencing every expression of your soul in all its lifetimes and in all dimensions. And it's your spirit's vehicle of expression, which sets the intention for each incarnation so it can experience certain themes through its individuated fractals of consciousness to develop its personality or essence even more. And finally, there's your spirit, which is you as source or God consciousness, experiencing everything your higher self and your oversoul are experiencing through each of the incarnations of every single soul contained within it in the eternal now. I know this episode was a complex, brain-bending one, but you have a few weeks to contemplate it and come back to it before season four premieres on October 24th. And if you know your soul's evolutionary journey would be enriched by having a mentor in this incarnation who has a deep understanding of all of this, whose purpose is to help you embody as much of your soul light and higher self as possible, and you'd like to be able to ask me questions anytime, as well as access all of my channeled, guided activations, quantum healing sessions, rituals, meditations, masterclasses, and more, please hit up the show notes or description box below to join Sovereign Souls Society, or snag one of my limited one-to-one spots if you want to learn my divine downloaded signature quantum healing modalities, plus get custom healing sessions, activations, rituals, meditations, and everything else that are channeled specifically for you, my undivided attention and full support, and free membership in SSS while we work together as my gift to you, because you deserve to live in a reality of mastery, purpose, freedom, fulfillment, peace, the highest joy, prosperity, synchronicity, 
magic, and abundance in every aspect of your life simply by being who you were born to be, and I believe in you, so you should too. Much love.